pumping needs to stop into India. In fact, Aditya Vilakar, who's been tracking the metal sector very closely at Access Securities, is with us right now. Aditya, what do you make of the statements coming in for the minister? And do you think if the, you know, uh, import duty is increased from 7.5 to, let's say, 10 to 12 percent, would that be enough to boost the, you know, domestic uh, consumption? Yeah, so currently on the current uh, spot prices, uh, if you look at the import parity, uh, the domestic HRC prices are trading at uh, almost 8% premium to Chinese uh, steel prices. So if they increase the uh, duties from 7.5 to 12%, then that premium falls to almost 4%. Uh, but still, uh, even if they increase the duty from 7.5 to 12%, Indian HRC prices still trade at a premium of 4% to the Chinese prices. So it will be it will be a helpful and a sentimentally positive step. But uh, given the quantum of fall in Chinese HRC prices, um, uh, it, uh, the Indian domestic steel prices are still will be at 4% premium even after increasing the duty from 7.5 to 12%. So that's the back of the envelope calculation we have done. So I believe, I believe the recent channel checks did indicated that JSW Steel had increased the prices by around 750 to 1000 uh, dollar, not 750 to 1000 rupees per ton. Uh, but if uh, that is true that China has been dumping uh, steel at lower prices and demand is not that great, then uh, how is uh, companies getting this confidence to increase the prices? It, it, it might be a slight relief uh, in the steel sector post this monsoon, once this monsoon is over. There might be some pickup in the uh, domestically. If you see the domestic steel industry is still strong, so uh, in the first four months of this uh, fiscal year, 15% domestic steel growth is there, and post this monsoon, there might be some pickup in the construction activities. Based on that, some of the steel mills have taken some price hikes. But uh, if the China continues to dump, then uh, the pressure on the domestic steel prices will continue. And uh, that will uh, that will uh, that will put upward pressure on these uh, steel domestic steel mills to increase uh, or to increase any further steel price hikes. So uh, ultimately, the positive uh, demand or positive uh, trigger should happen should happen in China. And if that happens, means if the uh, post the monsoon, if there is some pickup in industrial activity in China, then that will be a key positive trigger for the sector. And so far, we have seen that uh, that trigger is yet to happen. Uh, the recent PA by uh, prints from China are in the contraction zone at 49.1, which is below 50. So we have to wait and watch uh, post this monsoon how the Chinese uh, construction activity picks picks up. So far, uh, they are not. Uh, there are no indications of any stimulus from China. So. Overall, uh, the outlook is uh, uncertain and uh, on the slightly on the negative side. So on the one side, we are seeing that China has been uh, impo uh, dumping uh, steel at lower prices in the country. On the other side, we are also seeing that uh, raw material prices for steel companies have been uh, falling. So what is the kind of headroom that these steel companies might have at this moment uh, to uh, co co compete with the Chinese products? Yeah, so if we uh, look at the domestic steel uh, players uh, in second uh, second quarter of this fiscal year, we might see some contraction in steel spreads because of this uh, fall in HRC prices, uh, partially offset by the decline in the coking coal and iron ore prices. Uh, what we can make sense of the spot steel spreads are still down uh, if we compare it on a month-on-month -month basis. So that will translate to lower spreads in second quarter of this fiscal. So uh, the upside trigger or the, the relief for the steel bills will only happen if there is some increase in the pickup in activities uh, in Chinese steel prices, as I said earlier. So uh, the fall in iron ore and poking coal will be more beneficial for non-integrated steel players like JSPL and JSW Steel. Uh, poking coal uh, is now below 200 and iron ore is now below 100. So that's uh, providing some relief to steel spot spreads. but uh, the HRC prices are down, so overall the spot spreads are down. Yeah, point taken. But given the fact you're talking about the headwinds uh, from the demand from China, etc., dollar index is something which is also very volatile. Uh, what's your uh, final pecking order on the equities and the stocks? Is there any fresh recommendation of a buy or most of them are sell right now? What's your uh, recommendation on the individual names? 
so we have uh, we have a negative outlook on steel stocks so we have a hold rating on tata steel and sale we are positive on non ferrous names like hindalco and uh, uh, hindalco we have we have maintained our buy rating nalco we have maintained hold because of uh, some because the smelters at nalco are already operating at peak capacity so uh, only in dalco in our metal pack we have maintained a variety only in dalco that you are positive on right now thanks out to for making time and speaking with us but we are not done discussing the entire commodities pack crude is of course something which everybody is watching out for we'll put the spotlight on that after this very short break miss vandana hari will join us